I tell every worship leader, somebody that wants to be a worship leader, I'm like, fall in love with Jesus and let him open up the doors he sees fit for you. But don't chase it. Don't climb the ladder because who you don't want what God doesn't have for you. You just don't. Like, you won't have the grace for it. You won't have the strength for it. Well, hey, everyone, welcome to Framework Leadership, a podcast about principles and ideas you can use today to take your leadership to the next level. I'm your host, Ken Engel, president of Southeastern University. And I'm your co-host, Michael Steiner, vice president of innovation and communication. And we are excited today for our guest, Tiffany Hammer Hudson. Tiffany uh, is an SEU alumna and is a member of Elevation Worship. She is an incredible artist, a worship leader, songwriter. Tiffany, it's great to uh, have this conversation with you today. I am so honored. It just feels so sweet to get to connect with y'all. Yeah, good to see you. And I want, I want to first uh, open up our conversation about your time at, at SEU. Tell us, how, how did your time at SEU prepare you for where you are right now? And what are some of the lessons you learned during uh, you, you know, your educational journey? Absolutely. I tell everybody SEU was some of my favorite years that I've lived. I had the best experience at SEU. Um, I really just feel like it it was obviously a time to build relationships and friendships and just grow as an adult, as a human, all those things. But the other level too is like, I just got to hone in on some of the giftings I feel like God gave me and just get discipled and all those things. So it it truly was some of the most formative years. And without a doubt, like it is, it is such a vital part in my story and the open doors that God has for me now. I, I definitely think that my time at SCU is so valuable for that. Yeah. And what I love about your journey, you know, and I got to watch it, we got to watch it come up for ours, how involved you were with everything. I mean, you were everywhere you could go, you were singing, you were on a team across the board. I mean, you were even working locally with different churches, singing and different stuff like that. How and put, what advice would you give to current college students about being involved on a deeper level. How important was that for you? And um, yeah. and what advice would you tell them about getting involved? Yeah. Well, I think with anything in life, you really get what you put in. Like you could go, go to college and just kind of do the bare minimum, show up at class, not really attend any events, and you could get a fine experience. But if you choose to just commit and just say yes to everything. Like I'm just going to have four years of my life where I'm saying yes and I'm being involved. And I think that's truly when you get the best experience, putting your whole heart, your whole self into it. So that's for sure. My advice, like show up to things and go afraid and alone. If you have to or invite somebody, like just be a part of it. And I think you'll be surprised at the relationships that even bless you down the road and the things you learn throughout the process. So um, that's for sure huge. Was there any part of the experience that you say like, man, everybody else did this and I did it too, but I, that, that didn't matter as much. Like what's, what are some of the things there? Sorry, wait, repeat. I'm sorry. So like, mm. like, uh, if, was there something about it where you're like, man, don't worry about that as much as, as in the time frame, it seemed like it was a big deal. But as you reflect back on it, it's like, ah, that wasn't as big a deal as I needed to. If I had put more time anywhere else, that didn't matter. Okay. I hear you. Yeah. I mean, I think that kind of goes for everything for me. Like, Please. I think I have the personality that tends to just overanalyze every little decision, every little mm -hmm. thought, or if it's like you get an opportunity, say, I guess for my example would be mm -hmm. like, I got to sing at chapel and that was huge for me, but I messed up. And I was like, it's the end of end of my <laughs> dream, end of my goals. You know, all that kind of thing. And you're overthinking. They're never going to give me an opportunity again. Which one? God is the one who gives opportunities. Right. So That's it's right. not all in the hands of man anyway. Mm -hmm. But I think our human minds can just overanalyze and think it all depends on us and our perfection and all of those things. So just realizing that God is truly sovereign and opens up the doors when we need them opened. And yes, he uses man and doors open and opportunities, but don't overthink those things because mm. God is so much bigger than all of that. Yeah, absolutely. You know that we're all about uh, experiential education at SCU. We want we want students to get out there and what they're learning in the classroom, actually put it to work in the in the yes. field that they're, you know, feeling a call in. And and you took quite a risk uh, after your undergrad years. You actually went after a, a unpaid internship uh, with Elevation Worship. A lot of people wouldn't, 
probably wouldn't be willing to do that. They want to get right in and, and start getting that paycheck. But obviously, it was a risk. But why and how did it ultimately pay off for you? Absolutely. Well, it's funny. I tell people that ask me, how did you get involved with Elevation? And I always say, during my time at SEU, I needed an internship to graduate with my major. Mm -hmm. And so randomly heard about Elevation. I kind of knew of the church and decided to do an internship because I, I needed an internship to graduate. And little did I know, God He's so mm -hmm. divine. Yeah, Nothing's yeah. coincidence with him, but he would have me stay and be a part of the church. Um, but I just think like being faithful in those little things and kind of taking uncertain steps is, is just the territory God lives in of like, you just say yes. And just, I didn't have a plan. I didn't plan to stay at Elevation. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even in my heart, but like through that little yes and just, okay, I don't know if this is the right thing, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to show up and, and kind of do the nitty gritty things of ministry. And it wasn't glamorous in any way, but, um, just showing up. And I feel like God, God used that to break my heart for mm -hmm. this specific ministry and, um, the mission and the values and all that. I just kind of fell in love with what the church was about. And so little did I know that little yes, um, moved there for a summer in college and then God would have me be there. So mm -hmm. you just never know what he's up to. Right. Um, he doesn't let us in on the full picture, but I think right. that's part of the beautiful thing about trusting God in all of it. Yeah. Now for you, you know, you, it's, it's, this is, this is unpaging. You just graduated college, right? People want jobs. They want to get money. And, and I think so many students can get really myopic on that when they first graduate, right? Like it's like, okay, I got, I got to land that first job. I've got student loans to pay off. I've got to have my first career. I got, you know, my parents' expectations. I should have all this different things. Um, but you had that courage to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to take this risk in there. Tell us a little bit about why, why you had that courage and how can you encourage other students to have that same kind of courage to take a risk in that moment? Yeah. Well, I would say looking back, I don't even know that I felt courageous in the okay. moment. Uh -huh. I kind of felt more like, what am I doing? I remember it being my senior year and I had, uh, you know, not a lot of job offers. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I <laughs> supposed to do? Like, I maybe had a few things here and there and I, I just, there's just a level of the gut that mm. I, I now know to be the Holy Spirit, but that you just have to follow that knowing in your spirit of like, this is right, although it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, um, I'm just going to do it. And though looking back, it, it does seem like a courageous step of faith, but sometimes in the moment you feel a little bit foolish, but right. I think faith is foolish. The Bible literally says it is foolish yep. to those who yeah. don't understand. Right. And in a world, in a, in a culture, in a generation where, yeah, you could... You could on TikTok or YouTube mm -hmm. do everything you need to do and make a living at your house. Like there is a level of self-sufficiency that I think our generation mm -hmm. has. But to take this step and be like, I'm just going to trust in this thing that might seem foolish um, is really where I saw right. like just this, that season of trusting God just expands like what I knew about God. Well, yeah. and that's such an important principle because I feel like so many students, they want they want a cookie cutter like path laid out from, right? So yeah. I want to know my degree right into my career, right into my raise, all the way up to my family. I, I want it all blocked out. I want to know exactly what the next steps are, all the different stuff. But success in life isn't like that, right? Like, obviously right. there's, out, there's that out there. You can choose that. You know, if you're an accounting major, you can go jump into an accounting firm and it can be all that. Um, but just like you talked about the opportunities that are out there, if you lean, lean on that Holy Spirit, lean on that gut and be willing to break out of the path, right? Yeah. Break out of the predetermined path. Um, yeah. And that's one of the things I loved about your story is it really was when you look at when you look at like the typical story of a worship major, right? They go in, they they do their thing, they they sing on stage at college, and then they get a worship job at a small church, and then maybe that goes to a bigger church, and then and then maybe they start recording, they do all this different stuff. But the fact that you were willing to break from that path, try something super risky, you didn't know how it was going to come out, um, shows what a life of faith looks like on that part of it. And so that's that's fun when I think about your story. Um, what what would you encourage people about faith? Like, what is it? How do you stir that up? How can you begin to flex that faith muscle in yourself even now? 
Well, as you were talking, I was even thinking, I don't know if this directly answers mm, that, but okay. I was thinking about my season at SEU being so filled with mentorship and discipleship Huge. and kind of like I was saying, I think we live in a generation where it's like, I don't need that. I can figure it out on my own. I can learn how to do it better than everybody just online or on YouTube, but actually choosing, no, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a disciple and I'm going to choose mentorship Huge. and I'm going to have someone kind of like wrap their arm, arm around me and say, like, I see a gift in you and I see God's hand over your life. And like, let's just walk through this together. Like, I would say that was a huge part too. looking back of like, that's why I was even able to take steps of courage. Like, of course you have the Lord who, Mm -hmm. if he's called you, you got it. But there's also people that need to come alongside of you. And I think we undervalue like how important Mm -hmm. other people's voices are in our life and their own encouragement and belief in each other. As Christians, we have to believe in each other because we never know what that will spark. So anyway, Mm -hmm. I know the question was about how do you foster faith and all of that? But I think for me and my story at SEU is like, it was someone taking a chance on me to Mm -hmm. believe in me and to speak life over me and my gifting or whatever it might've been um, to really like begin that, I don't know, begin that process for me. So love it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Tiffany, I, I'd, I'd say you're, you're really at the cutting edge future of worship industry right now. Obviously, the landscape looks a lot different than it used to, you know, even five, 10 years ago. Where do you think the worship music industry is going? What do you predict will happen here in the next few years? Oh, man, <laughs> it's a good question because there's, there's so much to the worship industry. And I think for our church, we are so about like our local church. And it's like we're there every Sunday and we might travel and tour, but like church is the thing. Sundays are the thing. So we kind of have a different picture of even what the industry is like. Um, But man, I just see like devoted lovers of Jesus that really care and love Jesus and letting it all be about that. Because I think if we're honest, like we live in this day and time where worship can be about all of the Mm. other things and all of the wrong things. And man, my heart just burns for, like the scripture says, true worshipers Mm. will rise up to worship in spirit and in truth. And so that's my heart for the world of worship and people that are being raised up that would just fall in love with the presence of Jesus and not what we do for Jesus. And to be honest about the temptation we all face to make it about the wrong things and to to daily submit and surrender and to resist that temptation, I think is huge for all of us in the industry and wanting to honor God with all of it. So that's my heart for it. That's what I pray that we see over the next few years. And more mentorship and discipleship in the industry, I think would be a huge factor to, to seeing that. So what what advice would you give to worship leaders, you know, young worship leaders coming up right now? Um, what do they need to know about this and and going forward? Maybe something that they that you didn't know at the beginning that you now know. What what would you tell them? Man, I mean, mine always comes back to the most simple thing, but your secret place with Jesus is literally what will sustain you. Because mm-hmm. I think, like I was hinting at, like it's it is new territory that worship is this big thing and genre and all those things. Um, but humans weren't meant for glory and humans weren't meant Mm. to carry any of that. So we kind of find ourselves in this conflicting space of like, there is this thing, there is this side of worship that people are really known and all of those things. It's a blessing, but it's also can be a burden. So I think, um, just falling in love with Jesus and letting your secret place truly sustain you is is the best thing I've learned. And it's not overstated. It can't be exaggerated like that. I tell every worship leader, somebody that wants to be a worship leader, I'm like, fall in love with Jesus and let him Mm -hmm. open up the doors he sees fit for you. But don't chase it. Don't climb a ladder because who you don't want what God doesn't have for you. You just don't. Like you won't have the grace for it. You won't have the strength for it. Um, And so that's what I would say. Um, It's a beautiful thing to just to worship Jesus Jesus and to have a love for that, but um, really not not despising the seasons where you just love him and mm. no one knows your name. Like that is truly some of the most, like being an intern and doing the yeah. things nobody wants to do, like letting your heart um, 
just love the Lord and love what he's about, I think is so important. That's good. You know, Elevation Worship received their first Grammy Award, so you have a Grammy. I, I, I think it's on your, you know, you have a shelf there in your studio, and, yeah. and it's yes. right there, but uh, it was the Grammy for Best Contemporary Christian Music Album in, in 2022, uh, and I think this was a collaboration along with Maverick City uh, Music right. as well. But tell us uh, about this album and, and how it has had an impact on your team and, and people across the nation. Absolutely. This album was so much fun to write and record and make. Um, like you said, we we collaborated with our friends with, at Maverick City um, and just had such a beautiful time I, just connecting and writing and talking about the Lord, the whole concept of the album. It's called Old Church Basement. It was mm -hmm. just remembering how we grew up, remembering the simple times in worship and just growing up in church and just, so every writing session kind of started with that lens of like, let's just return to mm -hmm. what we experienced growing up and talking about different memories and friends. And it just created such a beautiful, beautiful album. Um, and that, that night we recorded was just electric. It mm -hmm. was a few people in the room and we pressed record and play and we just worshiped our faces off. And it was some of the most marking times for, for us as a team. And, you know, I think with every project we do or songs we release, we really never know the impact it will have or how God will use it. And so to see, you know, even the recognition of getting an award, getting a mm -hmm. Grammy for it is, we just want to honor and glorify God that like, that many people could have been impacted by, mm -hmm. you know, little songs that came from our hearts and our team's hearts and our pastor's heart. And so it's, it's always an honor, but truly it's such an amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you attend the, uh, um, the Grammys that night? Did. Yeah, we did. Oh. It was so much fun. We had no idea if we'd win or not, but when they announced it, we all just were so excited <laughs> and just to celebrate because it is like, God is giving recognition to like right. people that just love Jesus and are mm -hmm. wanting wanting to see his name famous. So it was so cool just to get to represent that. Yeah. I yeah, yeah, love it. And you guys actually did something that you, we don't you don't see as often or is actually becoming more of a trend and that's the collaboration between two already kind of established music movements. Um, tell us a little bit about what that looked like and and how much do you see that being the path going forward, especially for these kind of bigger worship brands? Yeah, I think collaboration is one of the funnest things to do because you're like, this is what God's doing in our ministry, in our church. And they're like, this is what God's doing in our mm -hmm. ministry or whatever we're a part of. And you just get to bring that together and kind of like everybody just throwing paint on a canvas and what you get is so beautiful and different than you ever would have had if it's just you. Mm -hmm. and even when it comes to writing, like when people ask like advice for writing and not that I know everything, mm -hmm. but what I've learned has been like collaborate, get with other people yeah. because I can only take an idea so far, but when you bring it to somebody else, which takes courage and vulnerability they're able to shed their light on it and put their paint on it. And it just becomes this beautiful, sometimes messy masterpiece. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so important. Like, I just think the scripture where like it talks about how every part of the body is necessary. I think we really see that in collaboration because we're not holding just our piece and what, what we are doing, what we're good at. It's saying, no, we're sharing this, this thing with somebody else so that it can become this beautiful, mm -hmm. unique thing. So I think it should be more of a thing even than it is now because it's it's so fun. Love it. Well, we're going to move into our fire round uh, and just ask uh, some quick questions surrounding everything that we've kind of talked about. Uh, and, and we, you know, we always like our guests just to answer with your gut right away what comes to mind. We want to grab a few practical and applicable pieces of advice for all of our listeners today. So uh, we have, I think we're going to do three questions. Mm -hmm. Michael, you can start the first one. Love it. So, you know, what, you talked about this earlier, the tension between giving glory to God, but you're also on the stage. How do you manage that tension? What are some of the principles you've learned that really help you navigate those those moments? Gosh, I love this question. Yeah. Um, okay, fire around. Let's see. I would say um, a practical thing the Lord told me is, Put your knees on the ground before your feet hit the stage, and that will that mm -hmm. will keep you so dependent on on Jesus and being surrendered to Him. Um, 
just the idea of a stage being a place that things are exalted, but an altar being a place that things are laid down. And mm. so viewing every opportunity, every platform, big or small, as an altar um, has really helped my mind shift of like, this isn't about me. We're mm. all here to lay things at the feet of Jesus, not to be exalted, not to not to see things raised up, but to really lay things down has really helped like my own mental picture of, of what it's about and just getting myself out the way. It's not about us. Like God's picture is so much bigger. So that's what I think. What, uh, what Bible passage, um, do you go to when maybe you are facing a creative block and you just need some words of encouragement scripture that always gives you that? Oh man. Okay. (laughs) There's so many, right? I'm like, which one would I choose? Um, I think the Psalms yeah. are some of my favorites. Um, I always feel fulfilled in reading about um, the Psalm. Is it 84? I don't want to get yeah. it wrong. Just about like... We'll dub it over the, the right one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even the birds make their home in your house. Right. And mm-hmm. right. That is just such a beautiful image to me of longing for the courts of God. And so... Mm-hmm. Even creatively, like it just so much imagery and picture and like gets me back to the true desire of worship and what we're writing about. So I would say that one. Love it. That's great. Love it. So last question, what's next? What are you guys, what are you guys working on? What's coming out? What are, what are you personally passionate about that's next that's, uh, that's coming out? Okay. This is a awesome question. Um, we're always writing. We're always just dreaming up what maybe the next offering could be or could look like. And so we're doing a night of worship um, early this next year and planning to record a few songs and who knows what God will do with them. But we're just always like, whatever we feel like we have, we want to steward well and offer to the Lord and just see what he wants to do. Um, I'm so excited because I've been writing and working on some songs that who knows what we'll do with yet, but it's just a really fun season of creating and discovering. And so um, our church is traveling a little bit next year with our pastor. Mm-hmm. And so that's always a really fun thing to just get to see the reach of our church and get to worship with people all, all over the country. And so that's kind of what we're up to in a nutshell, but it's it's a fun, fun season for us. Oh, well, hey, we are so grateful for you and, and grateful for your voice and just the gift that God's given to you and how you're using that to uh, really do kingdom work in, in significant ways. So thank you for that. And thank you for joining us today. What a great conversation. It was a privilege to talk with you. Grateful for the insights that you've uh, provided all, all of our listeners. And we hope to have you on campus sometime soon again. We'd love to yes. have you have you here. And uh, But we're, we're proud of you and just know that God is going to continue to lead you and guide you in some pretty significant ways. So that's exciting. Thank you so much. Such an honor. Love it. Love it. And if you want to stay up to date with Tiffany, you can follow her in Elevation on Instagram at Tiffany Hudson and, and at Elevation Worship. It's where you can find out all the new stuff, including when that new, uh, when that new recording drops so we can all update our, our worship playlist. And uh, super proud of you, Tiffany. Thanks for being on the show today. You guys are the best. Uh, take care. Thank you so much for joining us today on Framework Leadership. If you're watching on YouTube right now, now would be a great time to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can get more leadership content right into your YouTube feed. You can also check us out on Instagram at Kent underscore Ingle at Dr. Michael Steiner or on Twitter and YouTube at Kent Ingle. And hey, if you love great email newsletters, and I know that I do, you want to check out the Framework Leadership Newsletter. Every single Friday drops in great tips to be a better leader, resources, thoughts, right into your inbox. Check it out. You can sign up at kentingle.com. Make sure you hop on to there. Thank you so much for listening to Framework Leadership. Take care, everybody.